Hi guys, today we'll be doing an industry panel called How to Become a Data Scientist, and you will gain insight from a data scientist at T-Mobile. Hi, my name is Muhammad Bari. I'm a principal data scientist here. Um, I, report, uh, I work in the enterprise data solutions team, uh, which Kristen is a part of. So one question we want to ask is, how did you get into the field of tech? Um, so uh, ever since I was a kid, I was fascinating with uh, the machines, uh, the toys that I played with. Usually I broke them and then I tried to fix them as well. So uh, the machinery inside them, that fascinated me. Uh, I, uh, when, uh, when I was a kid, my grandfather was working on different, um, he, actually two uh, sites uh, where he was constructing the dams. Uh, and whenever I used to visit him, he, since he was living very close to the sites, I sometimes used to go with him to the site. Um, it would fascinate me that one guy sitting in that machine could do so many things uh, with ease and uh, the impact uh, those machines had um, was tremendous. So that is something uh, also fascinated me. So when I reached my uh, high school during those days, um, computer was a buzzword. Uh, IT was a buzzword. So uh, then in the early 2000s, uh, I got admitted to uh, a very good uh, school and uh, I, I did my bachelor's in computer engineering. So the rest is history. This is how I got into tech. Mm -hmm. Nice. And we want to ask, how did you know you want to pursue a career in data science? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so uh, before 2009, um, Actually, in 2008, this term was coined uh, the first time. I began my doctorate uh, in uh, 2009. So during uh, my, my program was in uh, electrical engineering. My school was George Washington University in Washington, DC. So as uh, any other uh, PhD student, I was supposed to find an area which can have impact on the lives of so many people. Um, so I explored a few areas. I had a few areas in mind uh, already. Uh, one of the areas um, which has the wide uh, impact on uh, folks inside the United States and uh, outside, uh, that is data science. So I chose this field. Um, this is by far uh, the best uh, field in IT or engineering uh, for that matter. Um, as far as its appeal or need uh, is concerned in the next decade or so. Um, then uh, I did a few projects um, in T-Mobile and uh, which I will discuss about in a, little, in a little bit. Nice. So what is data science anyways? Yeah, so um, uh, data science is basically uh, the engine you can uh, consider it as an engine, which basically is driven, through, uh, is driven by the oil and data is its oil. So um, back in the uh, second half of, uh, back in 19th century and 20th century, uh, oil was uh, a very expensive and very rare resource. These days data is like that. Mm -hmm. So we have enormous amount of data. And as the amount of data increases, which is increasing exponentially, the need for the data science, the engine to drive uh, through this oil of data uh, is this need, need is increasing and the scope is increasing. So um, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is in a nutshell what data science is. Um, so uh, now uh, it, it's basically the combination of uh, different fields. There is uh, no one area that you can master and you can feel well, I have become a data scientist. Uh, there are many other fields. For example, you have to be very good at statistics. You have to be very good in mathematics. The linear algebra, the calculus, mm -hmm. mathematical courses you will study in uh, your school up till high school or college. Those are the things you would need um, to become a data scientist. Um, it combines software engineering as well. Um, and in a nutshell, um, mm -hmm. data is quite big and you have to find the solutions or uh, answers 
basically to the problems that you have. So it's basically, you can say, finding needle in a haystack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so can you explain some of the data science applications? Yeah, so, um, well, believe it or not, you might be using data science some way or the, some way or the other. Um, uh, some of you may know it that this is data science, and uh, some of you may not know that you are using data science. If you have ever used google.com uh, uh, or yahoo.com mm -hmm. or any other search engine where you can just type in and search for anything, um, that is, an, is a very good example of data science. Um, in, other, um, uh, in other daily life uh, example can be YouTube. So you click on the thumbnails, mm -hmm. the particular video in YouTube or in Netflix for that matter. Um, then you make your choice. You, you, you tell the algorithm that what is it that you're liking, okay? So based on your history, uh, it populates uh, and recommends different um, videos to you. Uh, that is a particular field of data science called recommender system. And that happens when somebody is shopping at Amazon or eBay or somewhere else. Um, if your portal, uh, is such that it is learning um, and recommending you products which suits you more. They are basically using data science. So for example, if you search for a book uh, or a particular item on Amazon, it basically tells you, you know what, this is good, but you can, people also viewed and purchased a few other items. So it recommends a few items to you. So that's another example. Uh, Tesla, or any other self-driving car uh, you may be hearing these days about, those are also the examples of data science. So what happens, there is a video feed inside um, a set of cameras inside those vehicles. Uh, they take the video, break down the video into uh, images, and uh, within those images, they try to detect whether there is a pedestrian, there is a stop sign, what's the speed limit, all mm -hmm. those things. And when it feeds, it gets the video basically, usually the, uh, uh, there are 60 um, frames or pictures within one video. So mm -hmm. it has to do these computations very quickly. So not only you have to detect uh, things very accurately, but the requirement is that things, are, that things happen pretty fast as well. So these are two different challenges. Again, uh, this is another very good example of data science. Mm -hmm. Now, um, data science, uh, well, visuals can explain things easily for us. Um, you might have heard of artificial intelligence, machine learning, or deep learning. Um, these, um, these are some famous fields. Usually people confuse one with the other. Um, however, there are slight uh, differences. Um, I would try to um, ex briefly explain them here uh, as good as I can. Artificial intelligence, uh, there are multiple definitions. Uh, I define it based on my experience and knowledge and learning um, mm -hmm. uh, and being a student in this field. Uh, I, I, as I believe that artificial intelligence in simple words is the automation uh, that you bring in through your software or hardware or in any other way. Mm -hmm. um, that becomes artificial intelligence. Now within artificial intelligence, um, the example can be you have a thermostat um, and basically uh, you set a temperature of say 70 degrees and you say if the temperature goes below that the heater should turn on so it, it, one process turning on and turning off of the heating or the cooling or whatever system you are uh, you have that automation has been brought in and that is artificial intelligence um, now there are some um, and basically, this is a very simple example. You have a sensor which uh, looks for the temperature, and if the temperature uh, is below or above certain threshold, and then certain action is performed. Um, mm -hmm. There are some fancy uh, algorithms which look at the data, try to learn from the data, try to uh, understand it more and more, and uh, dissect the underlying probability distributions, the patterns and try to predict something new. 
those are machine learning. Uh, so, or in other words, machine learning is the set of algorithms which mm -hmm. come under the umbrella of artificial intelligence, which also perform automation processes, but it learns from the data. And mm -hmm. then there is another uh, um, subset of machine learning, and that is deep learning. So within machine learning, there are so many algorithms, but there is a family of algorithms that come under neural network based algorithms. Mm -hmm. So you can Google neural networks, look at the images. People say they look like human neuron system. That's why they call it neural networks. Yes. Um, so those, uh, those algorithms, which are neural, neural network based algorithms, they mm -hmm. are deep learning algorithms for usually deep neural networks or deep learning algorithms have so many layers in it. That's why they're called deep. Again, this is also a new field, uh, mm -hmm. not a new field, but uh, um, it, it, if you have lots and lots and lots of data, mm -hmm. that is when you use deep learning, mm -hmm. uh, not just lots and lots of data, you should have lost a lot of computation power as well. Your laptop uh, may be able to deal with smaller a deep learning algorithm, but when it grows a little bigger, the laptops don't work there. You have to uh, have some bigger compute and bigger storage, which mm -hmm. cloud basically offers. This is something our team also does. We, we mm -hmm. offer cloud services as well. Um, that is another area, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is the sister area of, with data science. We data scientists work very closely with those folks. Mm -hmm. um, then data science is basically the combination of all. Mm -hmm. So, in the previous um, slide, we talked about the data science combines different fields, machine learning, uh, um, statistics, uh, programming, uh, mathematics. Yeah. Okay. So, so, similarly here, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, a data scientist basically uh, has to know about all those things. Mm -hmm. So, um, some of the data scientists focus more on a particular area. So when that happens, uh, they sometimes are also referred to as applied scientists. So usually mm -hmm. they are good with machine learning and deep learning. So when that happens, like suppose I'm a data scientist, I say, well, uh, I have worked with statistics for a long, um, long time now, and I would now like to focus on deep learning or machine learning. Mm -hmm. And I spent say uh, one, two or three years specifically uh, on machine and deep learning then I can become a data uh, applied scientist. Okay, but in in T-Mobile there is no such thing as applied scientist. Um, basically, if you're a data scientist, the expectation is you would know uh, about all those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now the, okay. these are the major steps that Mohammed is going to walk through us in data science. Sure. So. Um, uh, I will not go into the lot of details right now. I'm sure uh, whenever the time is right, you will go into those details yourself. I'll yeah. quickly explain them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first thing that we do is we engage with the business. So by business engagement, we mean um, we uh, the problems that we are trying to solve do not always originate within our team, mm -hmm. okay? So those problems can originate uh, from other um, uh, teams as well. Mm -hmm. And we call them the business, the client or the partners. So we have to engage with them uh, consistently. And that is the biggest business engagement part. This is one thing is not taught in schools, by the way. Um, so, so most of the times, this is one challenge that the data scientist has because uh, usually, the expectation from data scientists is that they are geeky folks. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when they spend so much time on studying and learning all those skills that we talked about a little while ago, um, mm -hmm. then there is little time left to be uh, someone who can engage with the business. But uh, this is part and parcel, um, not just uh, the theoretical stuff. We have to focus on business engagement as well. Mm -hmm. The outcome of the business engagement process is that we get the data, okay? Mm -hmm. There's lots and lots and lots of data. And within this haystack, we have to narrow down our search to the mm -hmm. data that is useful for mm -hmm. the problem 
or the use case that we want to work on. So that's the outcome of the business engagement. If we do it right at this stage, the rest of the stages uh, will be successful in. If we get this stage wrong, then if you have the wrong data uh, for a particular problem, you will not be able to solve that problem efficiently, if at all. You cannot put diesel into your gas engine. So mm -hmm. that's simply like that. Mm -hmm. So then the next step um, is the data analysis. Well, this is the uh, single most uh, time consuming mm -hmm. uh, process. It uh, basically can mean if you are working with text analytics uh, project, for example, um, my boss tells me, um, Muhammad, go and find uh, how the uh, sentiment of uh, the folks in the United States regarding a particular news is on Twitter. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll go, uh, I'll scrap the data, uh, I'll work with the engineers, I'll, I'll get the data uh, from Twitter, and then um, somebody, when, when they're happy, they, they would use different kind of words, like yes, yeah, and hooray, and all those things. Now, mm -hmm. I have to bucket them together to, to know that yes, the guy's actually happy. So mm -hmm. this kind of analysis um, basically requires knowledge of the business. So uh, that one example I gave you is easier to understand, but if I'm working with the retail folks, uh, retail planning folks that we have, that um, um, how many retail stores T-Mobile should have and where. So mm -hmm. if I'm working on such issues, then I need to have more and more in-depth and particular knowledge and skill set. So uh, that is where we, that knowledge comes in the business engagement uh, phase and then in this phase we basically analyze the data. Mm -hmm. Once we have done the business engagement as well as the analysis, you can safely say we have done at least 70% of our work, if not 80 or more percent. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we uh, after this analysis, the machine learning part begins. So machine learning, uh, let me explain it very quickly. Machine learning is a black box. You enter some data to it and you get some predictions. Mm -hmm. So in the first phase, what we do, we, we give the data in the form of questions as well as the answers. Mm -hmm. So we tell the machine learning algorithm that here are your questions and here are your answers. Just mm -hmm. like a teacher would tell you during your uh, class session, these are the concepts, these are the solved examples. So he'll, he'll tell you what the question is, what the answer is. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, but once this training part has been completed, then the test phase begin. And these are the actual terms that we use in machine learning. So in the test phase, what happens? The machine learning algorithm only gets the questions, mm -hmm. not the answers, and then it is asked to predict what the answer would be. Okay, so for example, we give it uh, the data, which basically is a credit card transaction, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> In the training phase, we tell the machine learning algorithm, uh, well, for this kind of data, the transaction was successful. And for this kind of data, the transaction was uh, basically blocked. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody swiped the credit card and we blocked the transaction. So we train it uh, where we tell it, well, this is the data, the question, and this is the outcome, the answer, whether blocked or not. And now at the test phase, we basically give it the data. We do not tell it. Uh, whether the transaction was successful or not. We asked the machine learning algorithm to tell us, well, tell us now uh, how much you have learned and whether the, um, uh, the transaction was successful or not. Mm -hmm. So after that, we get some kind of accuracy. Accuracy can be between zero and 100%. Mm -hmm. And ideally speaking, we would love to have those things at 100%, <laughs> but, but that rarely happens in real world. And we settle for something less. Mm -hmm. Depending upon the problem that we work, sometimes 99.9% uh, uh, of accuracy is can be bad, and sometimes 60% of accuracy can be good, depending mm -hmm. upon the use case we are working with. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to name those bigger corporations, but uh, one of the speech recognition uh, algorithm, um, they're very famous. Uh, you may be using them. 
um, they, 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 they get it 50% right. Okay, mm. so such an expensive product they have, maybe the most expensive product they have uh, mm. in their line of field, uh, but they get it 50% right. Okay, but I can name Google, uh, they get it 90, more than 90% right. Okay, mm. so, um, so it depends what kind of use case uh, you use. Mm -hmm. Once all this uh, phase has happened, that is, that is the point till data scientist is basically leading. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, in the next phase, testing happens. That is also where data scientist uh, is heavily involved. But then in the next phase, the deployment needs to happen and the testing with regard to uh, with regards to the uh, software development life cycle uh, that needs to begin so that uh, the the algorithm that we have in our laptops or wherever we have um, uh, created, uh, people can use them. That is where we uh, seek assistance uh, and guidance from data engineers. So, um, so we are also involved. Data scientists are also involved, but uh, we take the back seat and we let the engineers take the lead on that. Nice, That's a really good explanation. So, our next question is: um, Since you're a data scientist at T-Mobile, we we're wondering what do you do? on like a day-to-day -day basis and yeah yeah uh t-mobile is a very fun place to be um i, I have a feeling of inclusion and ownership uh, in t-mobile uh, that that is something uh, uh this feeling i never had in other uh, organizations so t-mobile is a fun place no doubt about that uh, a very good place to be in and especially these days uh, we are growing and we are growing uh, very fast so it's a very 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 good time to be at t-mobile say for the next 10 to 15 years um, then and hopefully in future so uh, so i um, uh, have to look into the large amount of data sets and try to find answers again finding the needle in the haystack that is one thing i do at t-mobile um, and then uh, um, i helped develop uh, and then maintain um, relationships with some clients with our partners that are very valuable to our team uh, that saved a lot of uh, dollars for uh, the client and uh, uh, enabled us to deliver something valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, please. So other than that, um, uh, I, last year actually, I conducted a few trainings um, and I do, through those trainings, I tried to elevate the level of learning of those people around me who are not data savvy. They were software engineers, excellent software engineers, uh, mm -hmm. but the the need was that um, those software engineers, those analysts, those leaders who are not very much hands-on uh, data science folks, uh, they should understand uh, what we deal with um, so that they, they have the right expectations from us. And when we communicate with them uh, in order uh, to have something like we, we need to deploy something or we need uh, that particular kind of algorithm to be running fast, things like that, then we can rely on them. Before, before we can rely on them, they should first understand. Uh, they should have the understanding. So that is what I uh, focused. Um, uh, here in this year, uh, I am working on um, productizing to major products that my team is uh, spearheading. So that is another part um, I'm working on. One of the products is on uh, improving the infrastructure, uh, the, the data centers infrastructure that we have, critical mm -hmm. infrastructures. Uh, data center basically um, uh, is a huge building which has so many RAMs, hard drives, and all those uh, compute. Basically, you, you would have heard cloud. So that's actually that cloud, uh, the data centers that we have. So how to better regulate them, uh, where, uh, uh, which part, uh, which data center is, uh, has uh, been working over capacity or under capacity. Um, so in order to better regulate them, um, this is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And that is one product we are working on. Another one is uh, in the retail um, mm -hmm. sector. Uh, it's regarding our uh, over 9,000 uh, stores, the new T-Mobile that we have, uh, over uh, 9,000 stores that we have mm -hmm. um, to uh, 
to, to find the optimal solutions and answer different kind of questions. Um, that is another product that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And then, well, I have a long-term passion. Mm -hmm. um, I, before I did my doctorate, uh, I was able to publish a research paper. And ever since I, I knew I wanted to become a researcher and that is something I do um, uh, other than my day job. Mm -hmm. uh, and I try to publish uh, research papers. I have uh, 14 published research papers uh, and uh, uh, my work has been cited over 109 times uh, throughout uh, the world, China, Brazil, United States. So that is something um, I I'm very passionate about. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So <laughs> what is the most challenging part about working as a data scientist? So here we are at this question now, okay. So um, always uh, a data scientist, anywhere you go, uh, one challenge is very common and that is we have to find the answers to the problem. Uh, and the problem, the answer is basically uh, is hidden somewhere in this huge haystack, haystack of data. Mm -hmm. And it has to be a layered approach in the beginning, you do not know in which corner uh, or in the center for that matter, the answer would be or in which direction the answer can be. You have to peel the layers off. Uh, it's an art, more uh, uh, of an art than science. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is one challenge. However, that's not the biggest challenge. That's the uh, day job. That's the daily challenge that we face. The most challenging uh, part or the hardest part is that when we try out different algorithms or techniques, then we uh, we communicate it to our business partners, our leaders that, well, I'm using these algorithms under these, these circumstances mm -hmm. and the reason algorithm alpha is working and al algorithm beta is not working is this, this and this. So mm -hmm. that's basically because not all the partners or the leaders are data science savvy, okay? Uh, data science, as I mentioned, uh, it's the term uh, coined in 2008 for the first time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, a, it's relatively a new field. Um, and especially as the data sets uh, begin to grow bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. the, the data science um, uh, term was coined more and more. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one challenge that we have to face in order to communicate uh, with the folks. So for example, if um, you are, uh, if you're looking for a good stock to purchase, and by the way, T-Mobile is an excellent stock. <laughs> so, so once, uh, and um, no joke, it's an excellent stock. Um, <laughs> you can make a lot of money on that. So, uh, <clears throat> so once um, uh, you're looking at different stocks and you would say, you know what? Uh, I am someone who don't want to lose money. I don't want to risk uh, a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not uh, comfortable with taking a lot of risks. So you would say, okay, let's look at the stocks uh, and look at their daily variations and, and see uh, which one has the smallest variance. Mm -hmm. So the smaller the variance, the smaller the risk would be associated with it. Now you would ask me, I haven't heard about variance. Tell me why this um, th this is the right thing to do. So that's the challenge I have to face. There's someone who doesn't know uh, what the particular um, algorithm or the technique uh, is doing, but then we'll have to explain to them um, that uh, what this technique is in very simple terms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it should make sense to them. Uh, they're not interested in how many uh, lines of code or how much complex I make this thing. It should be as easy as possible for them so that they can play with it. You mm -hmm. can, why the Apple phones, they, they came in and they were immediately successful. Uh, my four-year-old can operate an Apple phone completely. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's the amount of ease they bring in. So if something is very easy to deal with, um, basically this means a lot of effort has been put into. So mm -hmm. uh, coming back to 
uh, so that example I was talking about. Um, now, this is how I would explain it to you. Uh, if you haven't heard about variance and you still understand why I would use variance to to judge the to gauge the uh, risk uh, within the uh, stock, then this means I have delivered what I wanted to deliver, and that's uh, part of the challenge that we have. Mm -hmm. So, variance basically is a statistic. Uh, like average and other statistics, uh, this measures how much is the variation, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you intend to buy a stock and you want to be safe, you, mm -hmm. you're not interested in making too much money. You, you want to say, well, it should grow steady, but it should not fluctuate a lot. Mm -hmm. If it fluctuates a lot and uh, I'm in the negative cycle, I'll be doomed and I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. So mm -hmm. if that's the scenario, you would say, well, look at some something which is not fluctuating a lot, which basically is fluctuating as little as possible and is growing as well. Mm -hmm. So, so you you measure the fluctuations through variance. It's mm -hmm. like um, um, uh, it's like uh, um, uh, how many oranges do you want? Mm -hmm. So the way to the way to gauge is well this many pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So similarly, uh, variance if smaller, this means uh, smaller variations mm -hmm. um, and, and which means smaller risk uh, mm -hmm. in time. If it's fluctuating a lot, um, there is a lot of variance. Yes, some uh, folks, uh, young folks who are not afraid to take challenges, they would say, yeah, well, it can go up as well. I can buy it then. Well, in that case, variance is not the right one. But if someone uh, like me who doesn't want to take so many challenges um, with the stocks, then that is something we can look into. We can use variance for that purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So uh, we want to ask, what tips and advice do you have for um, these six to tenth grader students um, participating in our program? <clears throat> that if you know, if they're interested in pursuing the data science track, like you. So uh, the there are a few things uh, that uh, i'll talk about you can do in your life um, and it worked for me it's not necessary that it works for everyone but mm -hmm. i tried to choose uh, something that should work um, for everyone so uh, that's that uh, first of all uh, we should always aim high mm -hmm. um, my personal um, my personal uh, story is that whenever I aim very, very, very high, I strive for it. Mm -hmm. And I, even if I miss the target, I'm still very satisfied. Uh, uh, but if I aim low and I achieve it easily or after some hard work, uh, then I have a feeling that I could have done more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have I felt that I'm a little less satisfied in that scenario. And the final outcome is also not that glamorous. So that's why I would say aim very, very high. It's okay uh, to lose, but resilience is what it prevails in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other thing I do is I always try to compete m with myself. Um, that, that, that enables me, I'm the best judge of myself. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I, I, I take a particular problem. Uh, I try to work on it. And I try, try to improve it. And I try to keep on pushing the boundaries that I have. And this basically improves me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, again, I have to work well within the team. Um, if you are in a competitive environment with uh, most of the time with others, um, then sometimes um, it may not be that good for the team dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, that is also part of life, uh, but uh, if you compete with yourself, you'll always keep on improving. Mm -hmm. So in order to become a data scientist, um, the, your goal should be that you should get into a very good uh, data science school, some mm -hmm. undergrad degree where uh, you can harness and uh, polish your skills, mm -hmm. uh, but that is, for some of you, is far away, okay? a few years away. Yes. Um, the other thing that you can do from today is that whatever mathematical courses you have in your school, just focus on them uh, more than um, 
any other courses. You should focus on all the courses, but focus more on mathematical courses. If you have a statistics course, an algebra course, geometry, trigonometry, all those courses, uh, they play part. Uh, and mostly it's gonna be probabilistic, co probability courses, statistics courses, um, the algebra and calculus. These four branches of mathematics, um, mm -hmm. we have to employ them uh, a lot. And then if you have a good coding uh, competition, programming competition or some course, uh, suppose AP introduction to programming or something like that, yeah. you must take it. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, you, you must do and mm -hmm. spend a lot of effort into it. By the way, uh, there are no prerequisites for learning any uh, programming course, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, what's the fifth one I cannot see? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. learning so a that, programming. That's the, <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, next one, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, do you have any resources for, like you'd recommend these students to get started on their own data science projects? Yeah, so I have shared a link, uh, mm -hmm. basically, uh, which uh, helps you learn Python mm -hmm. and and within, uh, after the Python, you would look, uh, go to the uh, data analysis part where you would learn NumPy mm -hmm. and Pandas. These are the packages in Python. Yeah. And then uh, some other resources are there. So follow it along, begin mm -hmm. with the first one. Uh, and uh, it's self-explanatory. Uh, you can always YouTube mm -hmm. um, the topics you should be looking for. There's a variety of courses, easy and very good courses on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing you should be doing is uh, you should be uh, taking up a programming course. Mm -hmm. um, so Python in, is one of the easiest and um, it's one of the most powerful language. Mm -hmm. There is no prerequisite required. I would say go for that first. Yeah, yeah. And I do want to emphasize that um, with the developer program, the students on the data programming track are already learning um, Python and we do have, we do have workshops for um, data science too. So we'll be introducing students to those. So definitely um, participate in those. And lastly, we just want to say thank you to Mohammed for taking time out of his day to um, introduce data science and give us an insight on what he does at T-Mobile as a data scientist. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much and hope you all succeed and do good. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you.